Hello class. So today we're going to talk about Grover Cleveland. Uh, when I do this in school, I typically do Grover Cleveland's nine consecutive terms with Benjamin Harrison in the middle because it kind of tells a complete story. Uh, but for the sake of a video, I'm going to do Grover Cleveland. As a standalone little map. So Grover Cleveland was born March 18, 1837. And he died June 24, 1908, at age 71. His home state is the state of New York. By matter of religion, he's Presbyterian. And then for family, um, I put complicated. So when Grover Cleveland was going into office originally, he had no children um he claimed and no wife something came up in the campaign trail is a woman that claimed that grover cleveland had fathered an illegitimate child with her and while grover cleveland denied this claim he took financial responsibility for the child and, and paid for their stuff their stuff so basically like child support um, later in Sturm, he's going to marry Frances Folsom. I'll talk about her more in a, in a bit. No matter of party, he is a Democrat. He is going to be the only elected Democrat from the end of the Civil War into the 1900s. Um, just a Republican-dominated time. His term of office for his first term is March 4th, 1885, and March 4th, 1889. And his vice president was Thomas Hendricks. So he has an interesting like rise to power. Um, and it happens in a relatively short period of time. So he was um, the sheriff of Erie County in New York. And so Erie County, right by Lake Erie, all right, so where Buffalo's at. And uh, when he was sheriff, uh, the responsibility of the sheriff was to personally conduct the executions of people that committed a capital crime. So as sheriff of Erie County, Grover Cleveland personally conducted two executions as the executioner pretty unique among American presidents. But then his rise to power afterwards happens pretty quickly. Um, in 1882, he is elected mayor of Buffalo. That same year, he is run as a candidate to be for the Democrats for governor of New York. And he wins. So January 1st, 1883, he is governor of New York. And then in 1884, the Democrats run him as their candidate for the national election, and he wins. So he doesn't finish out his term for mayor of Buffalo, and he doesn't um, go through his term as governor of York. Uh, and so in less than a three-year span, he would go from being elected mayor of Buffalo to being president of the United States. In 1888, he goes for re-election. And at this point, the state of New York is two things. It's one, the largest state in the union by population. And it's two, it's a swing state, one of the most competitive states. So Grover Cleveland narrowly loses New York in 1888. While winning the popular vote, but because New York has so many electoral college votes, it puts the election to Benjamin Harrison. He gets his own video. Now, if you know anything about Grover Cleveland coming in, it's that he served nine consecutive terms. He is the only president to do this. And so he is counted as number 22 and 24. And so we have some biographical information that we don't need to retread. Now, 
Interestingly enough, so his wife is going to be someone he marries during his first term, Frances Folsom. And Frances Folsom is the daughter of Robert Cleveland's late business partner. So, like, he bought her a baby carriage when she was born. Uh, that's the thing. Um, they end up getting married when she is 21 years old. And by this time, Grover Cleveland is um, 49. So there is a significant age gap. And one of the children they're going to have is... Ruth Cleveland, or as the press knew her, Baby Ruth. Later, or the candy bar Baby Ruth um, is going to claim that it is named after um, Ruth Cleveland and not the famous baseball player. So that likely isn't literally true. So he has a non-consecutive term. He comes back. Um, in the election of 1892, he wins the popular vote for the third time in a row. And this time he narrowly wins the state of New York. Therefore, that gives him the election. His vice president is Adlai Stevenson. Uh, he's only interesting because his grandson is going to be the Democratic nominee for president twice in the 1950s. So, Grover Cleveland's thing he's most well known for is that he had these non-executive terms. He also was constantly vetoing bills. He didn't like what he would call pork. It's unnecessary extra spending going back to a lot of the districts of the representatives. So, when he had a democratically controlled Congress, he was vetoing things. When the Republicans took power, he was vetoing a lot of things. Um, so he had 414 vetoes. Um, and the law for Labor Day is going to come into effect uh, while he's president. So most people know Grover Cleveland because he served these non-consecutive terms. Uh, but he was also um, you know, someone that fought against um, unnecessary spending and political corruption while he was president of the United States.